So, John, always great to hear from you. How are you? Wonderful, actually. Wonderful. Nothing wrong with this weather, either. We're here in the Isle of Man. We're here in Kirk Michael. Why did you decide to move here in the first place? It was quite by accident, really. I came here in between shooting something uh, and uh, fell in love with the place. You're well integrated in the Kirk Michael community as well. What is it about the Isle of Man community that makes you want to get so involved with the people here? You mischaracterise me. The truth of the matter is I'm just a damned stayover still. I am the worst neighbour to have because if I promise you I will come for dinner on Friday, the phone will go on Thursday and I'll be off somewhere. However, I, you know, I'm, I'm always known to give a talk at school if I'm in town or or help the, the lifeboat or, or, or the fire engines or people like that. I do a little bit for the hospice. So really, I, I try to make a contribution to the island, but uh, it's, it's pretty limited. I have the eyes of a hawk and the ears of a fox. Ooh. Last year celebrated 20 years since Fellowship of the Ring and Lord of the Rings. What is it about that franchise that makes it so special? Because it's a great moral story. Lord of the Rings? is not just about fantasy. It actually is a fable about evil and facing it and having the courage to see it through. And people tend to have a passion towards films like that. And it's only, as you say, a certain number of films where you, and you witness it, people have a real mm. passion for not just the film, but the world around it and the books and the cast and, and everything. And I, I imagine you've, you've seen that over the years. I love fan conventions. Fan conventions have done more to change me than any other single thing. When I was your age, I don't think I really liked people. Fan conventions have taught me that more and more I like people. Actually, more and more I love people. And at a fan convention, you can meet postmen, you can meet prison warders, warehouse men, nuclear scientists. I've certainly met over 300 active archaeologists and you meet people who have just been affected by the films. John, I have to tell you that my father was dying and we just used to watch Lord of the Rings together time after time and it really brought us together and it's a really emotional thing. You know, if you hear those stories from literally hundreds, possibly thousands of people, you realize that it was more than just another movie. I am companions. So be it. You shall be the Fellowship of the Ring. Right. Where are we going? Are you in touch with any of the, the cast and crew? Uh, we bump into each other from time to time and we've had a few, a few general meetings. Most of us are still working actors. It is the nature of itinerant working actors, you know, that that you, work to, you come together to work, and then you might bump into each other on another project in five years' time, ten years' time, twenty years' time. Playing as, as, as Gimli as a dwarf, you were one of the, or the tallest member of the Fellowship. I was then. So uh, how, what's it like playing as the tallest member of the Fellowship and playing a dwarf amongst, amongst your other castmates? I found part? the inner dwarf, you see, and there is one that exists in all of us. Hmm? Certainty of death! Small chance of success. What are we waiting for? I love him. I love that character because in a way he is the most human of those characters. He is us at our worst, us, his xenophobia, aggression, hostility, suspicion, slight paranoia. And at the same time, he is what we would hope was the best in us. A need to protect the vulnerable. A need to, to fight for what is right. A need to be loyal to your friends. An ability to change. An ability to, to realize that the course of my opinions up to this point does not match what my experience is of these people. You know, that witch in the forest, who if men set their eyes upon her, they are never the same again. What did Galadriel give you? Well, I asked for one strand of her golden hair. She gave me three. 
Of course, you know what Gimli would do. He'll take it home, take those strands home, and he will build the most glitzy, diamond-packed, sort of kitschy-looking thing for it. And these strands will be handing there, and he'll say, you know, look at that. There they are. And you'll be, what? Can't see. Look, oh, look at them. Look at what, well, is, is, it, is it by that diamond there? Never mind that. You say, you know. <laughs> One of the great things we love about Gimli is the fact that he doesn't realize he's small. That's why we find him funny. And his relationship with Legolas as well, and, yes. and Orlando. You've still got a good relationship with Orlando, and you still Well, I, you know, Orlando, is, he's, he's in the stratosphere these days. Um, uh, we, we, have, we have talked once or twice. <laughs> it was very funny, because when I went to fan conventions early on, shy teenage girls would get up and say, uh, John, did you and Orly hang out a lot together? Uh, and I would have to say, well, look, um, Orly at that time was 1920. I was 53. <laughs> um, you know, it would have been a little unseemly if a 53-year-old man was hanging out a lot with young Orly. Yeah, the are going to war. It is likely. Do you have a preference on, on which, which character you played? Of course, you, it's far more of Gimli, but... Do you have children? I do not. You don't? No. Well, I can't ask you this question then. But if you were a married man with children, or a man with children, I would say, which of your children do you prefer? The answer is, you know, you create most of these characters out of love. And how long do you think the Lord of the Rings legacy can go on for? Tolkien's fantasy has changed the way people think and write. He didn't create the genre of fantasy, but he turned it into a major force in fiction. But my bet is that in, in 100 years, those, still, those books will still be read. And I think those films, they will be remade at huge cost one day. I think the strength of the films backs up the strength of the characters. So many people now read the books and they hear Legolas's voice, or Gimli's voice, or, or Strider's voice, or Ian's great voice. When that happens, the book, the film, are bound together for as long as both exist. It was a wonderful cast, a perfect cast. But then you look at Raiders of the Lost Ark, that's a perfect cast. Asps, very dangerous. You go first. Working with Harrison Ford, it's not something everyone gets to do. What was it like working with Harrison Ford? Harrison is a really great film star. All actors depend on luck. You can say he's been a lucky actor in the sense that he's had two or three wonderful franchises. Harrison has, has given some wonderful performances and he's He's, he, he's been part of three major franchises. He deserves the accolades that he, that he gets. I've got to ask you about Indiana Jones 5. We're getting closer, hopefully, to the release date. Could we expect to see Salah make an appearance in the new film? Well, look, the truth of the matter is, if I was in it, I wouldn't be allowed to tell you anyway. So let's assume that I'm not. I would imagine it'll be amazing. Good cast. I would imagine it's a very good story. If Harrison has approved it, it's another blockbuster. In terms of film and TV, how much has the likes of government tried to encourage film and TV here, and has it been done enough? I would think that if we wish to, we could double or triple tourism to the island with one decent film. We have a wonderful island here, and we have wonderful opportunities here. We should be exploiting them. If you want to see the way film can transform an economy in terms of tourism, look at Game of Thrones. Tourism has bloomed in Northern Ireland. The cost of getting to the island and from the island is really prohibitive. So if we're going to get small productions here, we have to find ways of offsetting that. I'm by and large not in favor of government doing too much. And I certainly have friends of mine who have wasted three, four, five years of their time trying to work with the government to do things. 
if we were having a film industry here, and what, you know, then let's try and make the island one of the stars. It's a glorious island. It's got history. It's got mythology. It's, it was once the center of a great Celtic civilization. There is real genius on this island. There's talent, there's application, there's genius, and there is capital. And we are not using it. For 30 years, I've been intending to open a little boutique film studio here. We have got to start looking at our young people and giving them other options. And the film industry is, is one way of doing that. So in terms of short term solutions from the government side of things, what do you think should happen short term? I don't think we should rely on government. I think the less we rely on government, the better things will be. What we can expect of government is that it doesn't get in the way. The single greatest failing of this island is that it does not take advantage of the strengths of the comeovers and stayovers. There are migrants on this island who are some of the most successful entrepreneurs in Britain. And we don't ask them, we don't invite them to do anything. Let's look at this crisis, for instance, that we have in our hospital system. Uh, we have a real shortage of, um, of anaesthetists. Without anaesthetists, you cannot perform surgery. My bet is that if you, that if you asked some of the wealthier people on this island, would you contribute towards a an annual fund so that we can attract top quality anaesthetists here or top quality specialists here. My bet is that you would get a very positive response. All around the world, and I travel more than most people on this island on an annual basis. I've worked in well, probably 120 of the 150 odd countries of the world. Everywhere Increasingly, there is, if you like, almost a xenophobia, but more of a, a national awareness. People in different countries are saying, look, I understand what the benefit is to you in coming here, but explain to us what the benefit is to us. The right of, an, of, a, of, a, of a community to, to control its borders is an issue that we must that, that we must settle and settle amongst ourselves. Britain is dangerously divided at the moment. One of the great failings of the Brexit campaign was nobody took into account the fact that many Remainers would not accept the result. Most did, but many don't. And that determination to do whatever it takes to reverse Brexit is, I think, the single most divisive issue that Britain faces at the moment. We cannot go back and we've got to find a way of going forward without snapping the country. There is a higher chance of a military event that could cripple Britain and damage us than at any other times. That is not me trying to be alarmist, but it is me saying, look, have we actually thought about the unthinkable? In the event that we couldn't import stuff, in the event that, for instance, there were higher priorities for shipping than to bring food to the Isle of Man, now we have the possibility again of nuclear war or at least a limited nuclear exchange. And I think the risk for Britain is a lot higher than we estimate. We are now in the area that a year ago, if I'd been talking to you about this, you would have said, well, the old man is actually losing it. You know, it's... But these are real possibilities. I, do, I don't mean that everyone should stay awake at night worrying, but there are men and women who do stay awake at night worrying because that is their job. 
And if they're worried, we should be listening. It is very interesting that right at the moment in the Ukraine, the Ukrainians are referring to the Russians as orcs. And it has been suggested to me that Gimli ought to go there and show his support. I am certainly considering it. If it could be done without, you know, threatening other people's lives, you know, having to take an old man around, you know, for publicity purposes is, you know, you know, old men aren't worth dying for, for the, that reason, you know. But if it could do some good, and it might, then I really do have to give, give it some consideration. It will be the end, not just of our people, but all peoples. And just finally, I've got to ask you, Amazon coming out with a new TV show, the prequel to Lord of the Rings. What are your thoughts on uh, the upcoming series? I got ambushed by a journalist, said, uh, uh, John Reese davis uh, John, what do you think about this remake of Lord of the Rings that Amazon want to do? Instead of engaging my mind, I shot off the cuff. Bloody ridiculous. If television can do, the, uh, if television is going to do a remake of Lord of the Rings, it's an absurd waste of time, effort and money, and they won't do it any better. Yep, 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 yep. I should have just said, oh, I haven't heard about it. Interesting. Uh, in fact, it is not a remake of Lord of the Rings. As you say, it's the prequel. It's all those pre-Lord of the Rings histories that Tolkien created and invented. And they are marvelous. I'm not a great fantasy man. I'm more sci-fi rather than fantasy. But it's an enormous and wonderful venture. Uh, and uh, I, I cannot tell you how many times I've actually public up, publicly said and said, listen, guys, I know I said bad things. I beg your pardon, I shouldn't have. I wish you so much well with this thing. It's, it's marvelous. It, it was intimated to me that perhaps I might want to be part of it. The answer is no. I still have ambitions. There are three or four films of mine that I really must make. I think it will be wonderful, uh, and I think it will, it will just bind and enrich followers of the Tolkien uh, uh, world uh, and enrich them immensely. I'm always asked, what's your favorite film? And the only answer, in all honesty, is the next one.